Trick training is a wonderful way to build your relationship with your dog and have fun on a rainy day. But the best kinds of tricks are those that are practical and help improve your life with your dog. I'm Chelsea with Positive Futures Dog Training and Behavior, and today we're gonna talk about the chin rest behavior. This chin rest behavior is just what it sounds like. It's a way for your dog to take their chin and rest it down either in an open palm or in your lap on a towel. This behavior is so practical and has so many uses to improve your dog's stress level during normal routines that could cause stress at the veterinary office with restraint-free vaccines or blood draws, at home with bathing or drying your dog, and even in the confirmation show ring for hand stacking, holding the head for showing bite, and even holding your dog still during the exam. There are so many ways to teach this behavior, but today I'm gonna share with you how I like to train this behavior to my dogs and to my clients' dogs. Let's take a look. To get started with the chin rest behavior, I recommend you find a quiet place to hang out with your dog. If your dog already knows a hand target, this is a wonderful way to warm them up on targeting with their nose, which we can use to our advantage. Grab a handful of treats, maybe five or six, and warm your dog up on a few stationary hand targets where sitting or standing in front of them, they just move their head to take their nose and touch your hand. After a brief warm up, it's time for us to get started on our chin rest. During the hand target behavior, I like to present my hand perpendicular to the ground and right in front of the dog's nose. This makes it easy for the dog to reach out just a little and touch my palm. To shift this a little and start to get the dog targeting with their chin, I like to drop my hand underneath them, almost as if you're feeding them a cookie out of the palm of your hand. This way I can start to get motion of the dog's nose down towards my hand instead of out towards my hand. In the beginning, I'm going to accept any behavior of your dog attempting to move their nose towards my hand. Mark small movements with a yes or a verbal and then reinforce your dog. I like to be strategic about reinforcing my dog with their nose elevated. This way, after they finish their cookie, it sets them up easily for another repetition of moving their nose down to target my hand again. With a few repetitions of this behavior, your dog will soon figure out that moving their hand down towards your palm is what we're looking for. And you can start to be selective about targets that are closer and closer to that chin to palm behavior that we're looking for. It might take a few mini training sessions for your dog to master this chin to palm behavior. After you feel like four out of five repetitions are looking pretty consistent and looking like you want it to, then we can start to add duration. Now the goal of a chin rest behavior is that your dog can lay their head in a relaxed manner on our palm and wait for any amount of duration plus distraction like a blood draw or even someone else touching their body. During this time, that duration is really important. So we wanna start off building slowly so that your dog can be successful. This means that we're just going to delay that click slightly. So instead of marking or clicking the moment that chin touches the hand, we're gonna add a half a second before we mark and reward. And then one second, and then two seconds, and so on. Slowly adding half to one second of time each repetition. We want to make sure that we're building slowly enough that your dog is successful. If during this step of adding duration, you notice that your dog is wanting to lift their head prematurely before you have marked, this is a really great idea to toss a treat away from you as a reset and make the next repetition easier with less duration. During this duration portion of my training, I also begin to add two things. I add reinforcement directly to the dog in order to maintain calmness and stillness of this behavior. And I will allow resets where I toss treats behind me to allow the dog to move. Since this behavior is stationary, it can become boring and even frustrating for our young dogs. By offering a reset cookie, you give your dog a chance to take a quick break and they'll let you know if they're ready to come back for some more training. 
As I'm training this chin rest behavior, I like to build up to about 15 or 20 seconds of duration before I consider adding any amount of distraction to it. This way I make sure that the dog has a really solid understanding of this behavior before I add more criteria. Remember that when you go to add criteria, for example, somebody touching your dog while you're offering the chin rest, maybe you touching your dog as you're working on bathing or shampooing. It's really important that since we're increasing criteria of adding contact to the dog, that we decrease criteria of adding duration. This means that I might go back to only five seconds of duration in order to make sure that my dog is successful. And as I build this duration back up, I can do that with this new distraction of say, contact. Let's go over some common problems or challenges that I see clients encounter as they begin to work on this behavior. The first thing I see is that training is really exciting. And generally speaking, we want this chin rest to be a calm behavior. So you might need to play around with how much exercise your dog gets ahead of time or even your treat value. Remember that if hot dog is your dog's favorite treat, you might try working on this behavior in the beginning with something like kibble so that that excitement isn't going to be quite as high. Remember that the energy level that your dog brings to the table during a training session can be tied into a behavior. So calm training in practice can also mean calmer chin rest behaviors in your practical use. The second common challenge that I see is that somebody tries to add duration and distraction too quickly. Remember that while this might seem simple to us and we might think, gosh, my dog's got it. Adding distraction, adding duration, this is something that isn't as easy for our dog as we might think. So my rule of thumb is one mishap and we reset. I don't want my dog getting in the habit of multiple wrong repetitions in a row. One reason is because an incorrect answer means they don't get reinforcement. And if I get too many repetitions in a training session where my dog is not earning reinforcement, that can result in them being frustrated, which I certainly don't want. If you do find that your dog makes a mistake, it's also really important that that next repetition is a little bit easier. So less distraction or less duration to make sure that your dog has a repetition where they can feel confident and get the correct answer. The third common mistake that I see with my clients is that they expect that because their dog can do this behavior at home, we can take this skill on the road right away. This isn't always the case. Dogs don't generalize very well, which means that just because they know how to chin rest with me or my husband putting hands on the dog, say practicing for a confirmation exam, it doesn't necessarily mean they'll be able to do it in a busy environment like a showgrounds with a stranger. It's really important that we think about how we wanna apply this behavior and try to build as many small steps or approximations between where I am now and where I wanna be. For example, practicing with new people, slowly changing the environment, slowly adding distractions in the environment. By thinking about all of these little steps and these small modifications that I can make, you're really helping your dog be set up for success. They're gonna be successful and earn that reinforcement because you're only changing a small thing at a time. The fourth common challenge is what if I put my hand down for my dog to target and nothing happens? <laughs> this can happen sometimes. Don't be discouraged. What I like to do is take a treat and toss it away, saying something like, get it, as a reset for them. Then the next repetition, I make it easier by putting that target a little bit closer to them or even transitioning that target back to what looked like their nose to hand target. This way they can get a rep in where it's successful and then I might transition that hand lower and lower, eventually getting back towards that chin target. I hope this video helps you get started with your chin rest behavior. We'll be sure to add some modifications so that you you can see other tutorials about how to take this trained behavior and apply it in the real world, say for confirmation or for cooperative care. But in the meantime, start thinking about how you can take this skill, once it's learned, on the road. In that case, I think you'll like this video here, which talks about how you can start taking skills out on the road, common mistakes that people make, and solutions so that you can make sure that you and your dog are finding success. Happy training!